What up, boys and girls? So today for our Masters of Photography class, um, I thought it'd be a lot of fun to explore the subject of storytelling in photography. And we've heard that, you know, a photo tells a thousand words or whatever, you know, um, <laughs> I kind of blew that one. But we know that a photo is worth a thousand words, they say, right? Well, I don't think those thousand words are very valuable if your picture is not telling a story. Um, the components of a story could include a lot of things, a lot of aspects to a photo. Um, you'd have a scene or a setting. Um, you'd have a subject. Uh, the subject could be maybe a person or a character, um, but the subject um, also relates to your story. So different aspects of your story. Um, your story could have multiple subjects. Um, it could have multiple scenes, but now we're talking about, you know, you're going to need a few photos to, um, to explore your story. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you're researching how to do storytelling with photography is you want to consider a photo essay. So a photo essay um, is anything that's comprised of a few different photographs um, that are all a component serving the same story. So what I mean by that is like if you look inside the newspaper and maybe the cover story has a couple of pictures, um, those pictures are probably not related to different stories. They're probably, you know, emphasizing different details within the same story. So as a photographer, when you're approaching a story and you want to take some images to capture that story, um, the first thing you have to understand is, is what is your story? So what is happening? What are the actions? Um, you know, what am I trying to say with this image or with multiple images? Okay. Um, you have to identify what your main subject is. So in journalism, that would be, you know, whatever the story is, like uh, a famous boat is docking, you know, at the harbor, and that's the story. So you want pictures of the boat, maybe you want some pictures of the crew of the boat, and maybe a couple of details inside the boat. Okay, that's just one example. Um, so that would be your main subject in that case would be, you know, the boat arriving. Uh, what is the scene of your story? Um, so where is this story taking place? What is unfolding? Um, and then again, what details can you focus on that also kind of support the story? So uh, details in your story could include um, objects or maybe colors or maybe the people involved, maybe the look on their face, maybe they have a very furrowed brow and they're thinking very seriously, or maybe there's kids in your story and they're jumping around jubilantly. Um, let's say your story is about your brother and sister and they're playing um, in the sprinkler in the yard. Okay, so here's our second story example. So we've got the scene, which is the yard, probably on a sunny day. Um, we've got some details. We've got the sprinkler, uh, we've got the water, and we've got the kids playing. So each of those could be important elements and details of your story. Now the challenge is to capture your story in just a few images. So I want to share a couple of things here. Um, first of all, we want to look at the work of the photographer, uh, William Eugene Smith. So I'm going to go ahead and share that. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. And we're going to look at a photo essay he did uh, called The Country Doctor, where um, he's focusing on um, Dr. Siriani, and he would travel through remote villages in Colorado and, um, you know, treat patients, kids and families, um, you know, and the elderly and the dying as well. Um, so this photo series follows uh, Dr. Ernest Guy Seriani, and he was working in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. And the photographer, W. Eugene Smith, follows him around, and in each photo he captures a scene, a detail, and he tells a bit of the story. So not every photo tells the whole story, but each photo shares a very important aspect of the story. In this photo, we have a really important look from the doctor. In fact, whatever they're all looking at is, is off screen, off camera, which is sometimes the case. Sometimes we see more about the doctor than we do what he's doing, which because the title of the photo essay is The Country Doctor, that's kind of the most important aspect. So that is our subject. That is our character that we're focusing on. And I'll share this link in the description, but it's from Magnum Photos, which is a photo archive. 
And there's a lot more other great photographers that are featured in Magnum Photos. So that's a fun one to explore. So as we kind of go through each photo again, we want to consider how that relates to our story. So the first photo in the series shows Dr. Seriani outside. It's a very moody image. It's dark. The light is kind of coming from maybe in front of him to his right, but also a little bit behind him. But the clouds above are you know, dark and foreboding. And it shows him walking. You know, We imagine maybe he's kind of deep in thought. As we move down, we see a photo of him I assume kind of at rest, having a coffee, a break. He's got his mask off. In the second photo, we see him treating a patient. I mean, the third photo, we see him treating a patient, the second photo in this series. And a couple things we see, maybe a stethoscope. He's maybe preparing some kind of anointment, and there's a little tray behind him. Further down, we see he's you know, working with a small boy who's looking on and seeing what he's doing to his foot. And as we get further in the series, it seems like, more and more challenging what the doctor is faced with. Something more and more intense in terms of, you know, showing pain, showing stitches and scars. And we kind of get a deeper sense of the work that he would do. It almost puts us in his place when we would consider working with, you know, what I think was a couple of thousand families in this semi remote area with probably limited equipment and medical supplies, you know, making sure that there weren't any major emergencies. In this description, it says he was a physician, a surgeon, obstetrician, pediatrician, psychiatrist, dentist, occultist, and laboratory technician. That was from Life Magazine. So a really interesting subject for a photo essay. We may not always have such an interesting subject for a photo essay, but it's really exciting to consider um, what this doctor uh, went through and the way that W. Eugene Smith captured those moments and chose to highlight those images above. I mean, I'm sure he probably took hundreds more images, but those are the ones he chose to represent the series. Um, so when you're out there and you're considering your own photo essay, what you want to record, um, first of all, you have to find a story. Now, anything is a story, okay? Um, whatever your, your, your parents are doing, let's say they're, let's say one of your parents is cooking dinner. Okay. That's a story right there. And it can be beautifully captured and very artistically portrayed. Um, so the scene might be the kitchen. Some of the details we might have, you know, it's really fun to, to shoot with food and with kitchen equipment. So you could capture details of some of the kitchen equipment and some of the, the raw food materials, like if there's flowers and eggs and those kind of things. Um, a photo that has a little bit of action and feels a little spontaneous is a lot more fun than a photo that's perfectly set up. So you wouldn't want to arrange everything on the counter to look all perfect um, necessarily as part of your photo essay. That would be a cool capture for the art of it. But when you're thinking about multiple images telling one story, you don't really want everything laid out. You don't want to, you don't want to have any effect or impact on what you're seeing. You want things to exist as they are and you want to uh, capture them in their so-called natural state. So um, as the story progresses and, and dinner is made, ingredients are mixed up, something comes out of the oven, something's cooking in the pan, and then it's put on the plate and you have a finished product. That is a story. It's a simple story, but there's a lot of details that you can capture there. Um, so that's like a, like a story that you could capture in probably, you know, five to 10 images. And that's kind of the goal. Um, a magazine will publish five to 10 images in a story. A newspaper will publish one to three. So a newspaper story, um, because, you know, it's printed every day and it's, you know, not economical to have every story go on for multiple pages because readers are kind of flipping through it. A newspaper story might just have one leading image with one supporting image. So like a cover shot and a supporting image. So if you wanted to try to find a way to tell a, a story, a photography essay in two or less images, then you're really going to have to plan. You really have to think about what is happening, observe the entire scene, take all the pictures that you can and find the one picture that you would consider best represents the entire story. I wanna dive into a little bit of research here from a website I like to go to for a little photography tips and inspiration. Um, the website is called Petapixel and I'll share this link um, also in the uh, video description. But basically this is, the title of this article is six tips for telling stories with your photos. Now we're gonna skip around because these aren't necessarily in order from my point of view. Um, the first 
tip is plan, plan, and plan some more. Yeah, that's great. So you don't always know what you're getting into. So let's say if you're going someplace to capture a story, um, you might only have one camera and one lens. You know, there's no other lighting. You don't have any other cameras, no other lenses. You maybe have a spare battery and that's all. So the planning you do, you would want to visit the site and consider when your story is happening, um, what the weather might be like, what time of day, where the light might be coming from, and what other interesting things in the background or in the photo might tell your story. So in the first photo we're looking at here, I have no idea what's happening, but it's colorful and interesting. And we're going to kind of jump around because then I think the list kind of goes backwards. And I want to encourage you guys to check this out. So number six is don't be afraid of failure. So that's like number one rule in life, you know, is you don't want to be afraid of failure. You don't want to be worried that if you do not succeed in the way that you envision that it's going to have any impact really negatively on the world at all. Um, creatively, you're always going to be subjecting yourself. You're going to be a little bit vulnerable to failure. And that's kind of what makes it a good process. That's what makes it satisfying is that rare time when you don't fail and people actually really love what you're doing. Um, you know, that's what it's all about. So um, a, a typical session, uh, story, journalism session, you might have, you know, 400 pictures and out of those you're publishing five, you know? So let's just assume that the other 395 pictures, whatever, although they weren't failures, they weren't successful. So you just have to try a lot. Okay. And the only way you can try a lot is if you approach your project with confidence, you know, and don't be uh, afraid if you don't succeed. Um, next is be original. So, um, it's rule number five is be original. And uh, the thing is, if you're not trying to copy somebody else, then you're going to be original. The way that you approach an image, the way that you approach a scene, the angle, you know, it's easy to say be original, but really what that means is put in the time to take like thousands of pictures and see what you like out of it. And then what you like out of your images, that is what is going to represent your original style. If you were shooting a like an event like a wedding and you captured um, 1000 images from the from the wedding day the pictures that you chose out of that to share with the bride and groom they might be the pictures that best represent your style which would be you know certain something's out of focus and a certain something is is in the foreground a certain something is in the background so you can't help but be original as long as you just keep trying so again don't be afraid be original and then the next one is trust your instincts. What that means is, is don't overthink your session. Don't overthink your story. Be there, be present. Don't have any impact. Don't change the way things are. Just observe the story and be honest, okay? As you're trusting your instincts, what that also means is that you're taking a lot of pictures. Everything you see, you're like, oh, that's a great angle. That's a great shot. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. And then later you're going to decide which of those pictures work you know, to fulfill the, your story, you know, you're going to notice details too. Um, number three, take stronger images. Um, I don't know what that means. I think what that means is that you want to have good timing. You want to have good framing. You want to have, you know, good lighting. So basically take stronger images is kind of a, it's kind of a blank statement to me. What I think that means is it has to do with, don't be afraid, uh, you know, be original, find your style, plan and then the strong images are going to be the images that you like the best out of your set you know that you could defend as, as part of your story um, in this case it's saying um, strong images have an emotional impact so that all depends on if your story is an emotional impact type of story um, thoughtful and layered with meaning is another thing written here um, thoughtfully layered with meaning that's great if there's layers of meaning available to you Sometimes something spontaneous that's happening, you don't have time to, to plan all that, you know, so that's something that you can't really prepare for. You just develop it as you, as you go. And let's see, single shot or a series. So that's kind of the way you would approach a photo essay. You might end up condensing the entire story down to just a single shot or a series, like the country doctor was a series of, you know, more images than we saw. I think there's a lot more than what was there. Um, but you want to keep capturing until you think that you've fulfilled until the story's over basically and then go through and maybe there's one photo you consider the best that would be your cover shot and then maybe there's a few supplemental photos that focus on the details and those could be your supporting shots so a lot of things to consider and i'm just going to leave up a couple of ideas i had 
as I close. So again, we're going to go over in the photo essay, what is your story? Who is your main character or what is your main subject? What is the scene of your story? What details seem the most important? And then you have to capture your story. Let's say in five, let's say in five to 10 images, okay? Five, whoops, to 10 images. So that would be our goal. And I wanna see what you guys can do. So um, email me or post them on Instagram, um, hashtag PYCC live. Um, story-based photography slash photo essay. So I want to see what you guys can do. Um, make something happen, share the results with us, and um, just keep on shooting. You guys are amazing. Love you all. Have a great day, and bye-bye now.